Hi, y'all. It's Latrice with Purposefully Living. Listen, I just wanted to encourage you this morning in God's word. Um, I'm going to just jump right on in, getting ready to work out. And I was just taking some time to get fit capital F-I-T, um, focused, intentional, and tenacious about God's purpose and plan for my life. Um, I was sitting here thinking about how sometimes we are so ready to change this external, right? We're focused on losing the weight and um, getting in the outfit and changing our body for um, what others see. But God is such a, God looks at the heart, you know, and a lot of times we go after temporary, um, well, what will be temporary changes, but we don't deal with the root. And the root is internally. And so I just wanted to encourage you to let God change you inside and out. But what I wanted to, I, I honestly wanted to encourage you in God's word. I was thinking this morning, I want to share something, what the Lord shared with me um, yesterday. Literally, I was asleep and I saw a field. And I keep, the Lord just keeps reminding me about the seeds we plant, um, how that seed, it has to die. It has to, um, I think we forget that it's three parts, seed, um, time, and harvest. We just kind of run them together, seed, time, harvest. But there's three events, like the seed goes in, there's time for it mature, it's got to die, it has to be broken open, then there's a harvest. You don't put the seed down, and then you have a harvest. But as I was literally while I was asleep, I saw a field and I saw, you know, how you're getting you getting the field ready. Right. You know, you put certain things down. I have never farmed, don't own a farm, so I might miss a, a little something up. But my point is. You have to get the ground ready. You have to get the ground ready. Um, you're making sure there's no, you know, I'm thinking you put your spectacide, all that stuff down and make sure whatever's in the ground don't kill the seed. And you, you normally see this just ground, just of dirt. And then you start putting the seed in, right? But after that, there's a whole process of watering and keeping that seed because you don't just put the seed in and leave it. You know, every day there's something that you have to do with that seed, whether you're just watching to say, up oh, there's some weeds, I need to pluck those out or I need to water it. Oh, I'm going to put some fertilizer down. And through time, you start to see little blooms. What am I saying? We have to remember that watering is even important, right? You can't overwater. And I'm speaking maybe just to a flower or whatever your seed is. Sometimes the seed needs sunlight. Um, you know, certain things depending on where you're growing. There's different ground that it has to be in. Different, uh, and I learned this um, from a god sister. You know, even some things is not even so much the water as the sunlight and where you place it. What I'm saying, y'all, is spiritually thinking about that spiritually. God was just reminding me, remember the seed that you plant is what you're going to harvest. That's number one. So what do I mean by that? If you were trying to get apples and you plant orange seeds, you're not getting apples. <laughs> like you got to know the seed that you're planting. If you are trying to get um, those sweet banana peppers, you can't put pineapples down and go what happened and god was like be mindful of what you plant because sometimes i don't even know if we realize what we plant we like let's say we put the money in or we we say i'm gonna plant this for my business i'm planting a seed i'm planting a seed but also understand there's other seeds that you could be planting you done made all this ground but you're planting doubt every day why are you giving the money? Why are you, you know, being a blessing to somebody? You doubt the whole time. That's a seed. And then when you reap a harvest of fear, you trying to figure out why your daily, your, your, your habitation is that of fear of confusion. What are you planning? Remember that when you're planning every day, you're doing something. And what I mean by that, whether it's watering, exposing it to sunlight whatever that seed needs we have to be careful that we don't kill it 
you can kill it with good stuff. You could be watering every day and the seed is by is is look, it is drowned. It can't even do what it needs to do because it's drowning in water. You can expose it to so much sunlight and don't water it. So you have to know the process. Y'all, what I'm saying is God's word is the water. God's word us speaking his word us living his word us exposing like we have to understand all the processes needed to develop that seed and i was thinking about one of my favorite i know i say i have so many favorites but one of my favorite books joshua and in the book of joshua in the first chapter there's a part where the Lord is charging Joshua or speaking to him. And he says, be strong and courageous, right? He's telling him, you you see that often. And when God speaks, um, when you see things repeated, take note. You know, it's like head, headline. And you see all throughout chapter one, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. Because I believe there was some things he knew, you know, that he was going to have to go through now as he carried forth the mantle and the journey. But God, God was letting him know, be strong and courageous. I'm with you. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. Go do that that I've called you to do in my strength and know that it's going to take some courage. But what I love is there's a particular passage. I, I wish I, I should have pulled it up, but I want to read it to you. Um, I didn't pull it up, but I almost know it by heart. But he reminds him that your success lies in the word of God. Your success lies in not turning to the right. Don't add nothing. Don't take nothing. Walk this thing out. And y'all, why am I saying that? I, I want to read it to you. Here it is. It says in verse seven, I'm reading in the New Living Translation, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Next verse, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. We are like joining programs. We are doing all the things, right, to achieve success. Hiring life coaches, myself included. Yeah, I'm a life coach, but I am a resource. God is your source. If you want to be successful, our manual tells us exactly how to do it. It's not in the program you sign up. It's not in the networking. It's not. God said, no, come to me first. Get in my word. Begin to obey it. Begin to plant the seeds that I'm telling you. Watch over it. Do what I tell you to do. Get in your word. And I say that, y'all, because when we put God first and when we realize he is our source and then you allow him to dispatch the right resources, Therein lies your success. Your success is not in me as your life coach. I can fail you. I am a resource. I am human. But God knows you. He created you. He knows the purpose that he's called you to do. And he knows the people, the place, and the timing. He knows the people that's to be aligned with that. You have to give yourself back to him. It starts with him. It starts in getting in his word. He said, when we think about it, when we're planting that seed on the package or, you know, I'm just saying farm or flower garden, whatever, it tells you what to do. If you decide, well, I'm going to plant it over here and I'm going to add a, you know, a bucket of water. I know they say only water once a day, but I'm going to do this so many times a day. Then you trying to figure out why the seed not hot. Why I only got one fruit? Why my fruit look limp? Why the tree? You didn't follow the instructions. We're always trying to add to. God said, do what I tell you to do. Know, the, know my word. It's the foundation, y'all. You can't skip over that. He says, when you are not deviating from this word, when you are walking this thing out, that's required. You can't want the blessings and don't want to do what he said. And so I wanted to encourage you 
my, my, my motivation on Monday is just that. It's saying, y'all, we got to get in his word. His word is our manual. His word purifies us. His word enables us. His word pushes us. There's some places that you're going to go. It's taking strength. It's going to take being courageous. It's going to take, like I said, Monday, igniting that faith. But you cannot do that in and of yourself. That sounds great. I'm, I'm about to level up, whatever that means. I'm going to have a seven figure um company. I'm going to go get a thousand clients. I'm going to write 10 books. I'm going to be New York best time. So that all oh, that sound great. You can't do that in and of yourself. That's a supernatural process, whether you know it or not. I don't even care who your contacts are. You might be like, but I know such and such who knows such and such. Who you need to know is God. <laughs> That's this this book reminds you that success is already there. It's already been provided. But he said, when you be, when you come to me, when you walk this thing out according to what I said, when you seek me first, acknowledge me in all your ways, I'm success is given. We in Matthew, it reminds us to go after the kingdom, go after the kingdom. And he said, I'll take care of everything else. And y'all, I just wanted to encourage you this morning as we're planting these seeds. Number one, make sure you know the ground. What are you planting in? And then don't do all the work to till, to, you know, get the dirt ready, put all the stuff down. Then the seed you plant is the wrong one. You plant seed of doubt. Why are you giving the seed of money? Yeah, you volunteer this, but life and death is in the power of time. You snatching it back up. You know, follow instructions on the package. Our manual tell us that there's a way. You can put all, do all of this, but God says, study this word. He, you got to walk this thing out. You can't deviate from what I'm telling you to do. Though in the word lies your success. God has already given you instructions. He's always already provided encouragement. Everything else is a resource, but you start with your source. Remember that the harvest is not overnight. There is seed time and harvest, but each season matters. The timing matters. Because sometimes with the timing, you're needing the water. You're needing um, the winter to get all those bugs out. Every season matters. And so we can't want all of a sudden the harvest, but we don't want the winter. We don't want the spring. Each one provides something to that seed. So it's nothing worse than having something. You pick it and you're like, oh, this ripe or oh, it's not ready yet. Because you don't pick it. It wasn't time yet. But also know that your water, the word of God is our water. I hope this all makes sense. I'm trying to put it all how the Lord has given it to me. I just wanted to encourage you today to watch what you say, to read the package, your manual. Y'all, you can't. It's like we want all these things without God. We have become a godless society. Lord, give me your blessings. Level me up. Do this. Oh, but I don't plan on serving you. I don't plan on obeying you. Oh, I wasn't going to take the money. You bless me in my business and pay my tithe and plant a seed and be fruitful and help other others as you lead me. No, I just want your fringe benefits. I don't want you. It don't work like that. Who even want that naturally? Who wants that relationship naturally? Why do you think God wants it spiritually? No. But he reminds us, you ain't got to drive after success. You don't have to hope for success. Success is inevitable when you walk this thing out according to what he's called you to do. But you have to do it his way. You can't amend the instructions on the package. You can't go buy a Black & Decker product and then try to use another brand instructions. It don't work that way. You can't go and try to get God's blessings living the world way. Wrong manual. Use your manual if you want to see the product work efficiently, i.e. you the product. You want to see things happen, get into your instructions. The Bible reminds us, listen, it's here. He says, when you meditate, get this word in you, mull it over, live it, think about it, dwell in it. It's so in you that you're doing it and you obey everything written in it. Only then will you succeed and prosper in all you do. 
Y'all, it starts with God first. And so I wanted to just encourage you. I said on Monday, and, and this is the last part. It's a little smorgasbord. This is the last part. I said on Monday, I talked about the water, the woman with the issue of blood. 12 years she had this issue. She had went all to, to so many doctors, they failed her. In other words, she tried everything, but there was a process something she knew about Jesus. She said, if I can just touch his robe, the tip of his robe, that uh, I'm paraphrasing y'all. She was saying something to herself. As I said, Monday, what is your issue? What have you been suffering for 12 years, 20 years, whatever you got to get up, ignite your faith. Nothing changes till you get up in the interest of yourself. But again, you already, I'm telling you, you can make it, but don't plant a whole field of doubt, of fear, of anxiety. Like, don't let that be the seeds that you plant. You sometimes trying to figure out why I'm, I'm always anxious. I'm, what are you saying to yourself in the midst of your issue, in the midst of writing this grant for $1.5 million, in the midst of starting this business, in the midst of homeschooling these children, in the midst of fighting for your marriage that's on the brink, in the midst of trying to snatch that child. What are you saying? Are you canceling it out? No, but she said, if I get to just to, look, not touch Jesus, not get his attention, not get him to put his hands on me. She said, if I touch what he's wearing, I will be made well. It starts with God. People are resources. People, not your source. They can't change your situation just because they know this contact don't mean when you get that contact it's going to change. Just because who they know, y'all stop putting your trust in. He told her his response to her was, daughter, your confident trust and faith in me has made you well. What is your trust in? You ain't well because you all over. You in this program, in that program, in that program. You trying to reach out to this person. You networking. This. You don't know what you're doing. You got 15,000 things going on. Get the one, Jesus. Reach out. God first, y'all. Ask him what is his plan. Ask him to write through you that business plan. Ask him how to bring that child back. Remember, seed time and harvest, it might not be overnight. But that don't mean, mama or daddy, that you stop doing what you're doing. That don't mean that when they open up, come to their house because they need a meal because they don't have no money, that you stop loving them. And while they eating that little bit of oatmeal, you putting another seed of righteousness in them. Baby, it's time to come on to the Lord. You don't stop doing what you're doing because they 32, 28, 18. I mean, I don't know. That's not how my mama was. No, in season and out, you say the same thing. You don't know. You plant, but somebody else waters. The harvest might come another way, but you still do what you need to do as a parent. You still love that husband. You still respect him. I know he's showing his glorified behind. And listen, that's a whole process. But I'm going to yet love the way God loved. God's love is patient. His love protects. His love perseveres. Not your stuff. God's love. I don't know why I'm saying all of this, but y'all, I just want to end it with the word. No matter what, that lady with the issue, she reached out and her faith in Jesus, knowing what he could do. But he turned around and said, daughter, be encouraged. Your faith in me has made you well. So I just want to encourage you today. It matters how you're watering this seed. It matters what you say. It matters who and what you're looking to. The program isn't going to make you a millionaire. <laughs> I mean, we all would get the program, right? But obviously it's more than that. Y'all, it's a whole process. And God could say, that ain't for you. He could tweak something and say, now, nah, that's what you're going to do. Start with God. Ask him what he wants you to do and get in his word. So here is some word that I want to just speak over you. If you're dealing with some issues, you're dealing with some suffering, you're feeling fear, you're feeling anxiety, then get it. let this be a season that you get in the word on those things. But I just want to encourage you with some scriptures that I always keep. I have a flashcard app on my iPad and on my phone. And these are some scriptures that God gave me. And this is how I want to end it. Um, Philippians, y'all, um, four and six. 
Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I'm gonna try not to talk on these scriptures. That's a whole message. Y'all just do what it says. Sometimes we make things so hard, but God is like, no, you can trust me. My promises to you are yay and amen. I mean what I said. I love you unconditionally. I don't have nothing up under my sleeve. Don't worry. Bring it to me. Give it to me. And then thank me and believe that I've done. But trust my process. Trust my timing. Just because you told me what you need. Think about your children. They say, mama, I need some joy. Is mama, I need that. We be like, do they need that? They might need that, but this ain't the time they need it. And we know we gonna provide it, but we like, uh, they gonna wear them Nikes before I get them Jordans. Uh, they they act like they don't take care of their stuff. I need about another month to see. We all alone plan on giving it to them, but there's a timing. Trust God's timing. Next scripture, y'all. Here's um, ooh, okay. Oh, this is my favorite one. I've been telling you about this. Deuteronomy thirty-one and six. This is my scripture for the year. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will need neither fail you nor abandon you. He will personally go ahead of you. I'm going to keep going. That's Deuteronomy 31 and 8. I'm sorry. Here's another one of my favorite ones, y'all. Psalms 32 and 8. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway. I will advise you and watch over you. The Lord will guide you along the best pathway. But have you asked them? You looking at this person's recipe. You can come to me. But at the end of the day, I'm getting ready to pray to him to why he sent you to me. I'm a resource. He knows the best pathway. Start with God. God is Latrice, the life coach for me. Lord, I've looked at her program. You know what you've created me to do. Is this the person that you divinely want me to align with to get me closer to my purpose, to walk and help me navigate for what you've called me to do? You better pray on me. Don't be talking about the trees. Oh, she be getting fit. I love the messaging. I love, great. But am I what God told you to do? No, talk to him. If we would ask, if we would acknowledge him in all our ways, we would not experience some of the heartaches, but we just go out and expect because this happened for this person is go. No, talk to God. He said, I know the best pathway. Latrice might not be the best pathway. He might say, no, I'm going to partner you with this person. Actually, no, I just want you to get in your word. I'm going to lead you through the word. Then in the next quarter, he might say, now's the time for a life coach. And I'm going to pair you with it. He knows the best pathway. There's many paths. But why take the scenic route when the one that created you already has a plan? But we don't want to do the work. And that work requires us to stop, sit, and see. Stop for a moment. Sit down and seek the face of God. Stop wanting somebody to spoon feed you and tell you everything. No, you do your word. You pray. You get in his word. You wait. He ain't say nothing. That don't mean go. Stop. He'll speak. But if you ain't hearing him, it ain't time. We say, oh, well, I ain't hear nothing. That must mean no doubt. That's not that. That must mean that means wait. He speaks. But we not willing to wait. We have to wait, y'all. He said, I will advise you and watch over you. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you, you who are willing to learn with my eye upon you. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. No, they stumble. They will, though they stumble, they will never fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. He delights in every detail of his life. But you ain't gave it to him. Here is my last one. Hold on. The word. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be afraid for I am with you. Hear God talking. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. Now you got to answer that. Is he your God? Is he your God? I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious, in another translation, righteous right hand y'all here's another one this is my last one i promise psalms 34 and 4 new living translation i prayed to the lord and he answered me he freed me from all my fears y'all reach out and touch ignite your faith you don't have to do this alone like jesus is he's so 
He loves you so much. He died for you. He already, God is already predestined you for greatness. He has a plan for your life. Read Psalms 139 in New Living Translation, New NIV, Amplified. It will blow your mind. He already knew you before you was in your mother's womb. So instead of going after all the people, after the resources, why don't you start with your source and let him lead you? But be reminded in this season, if you know God, maybe you're a believer and you're, you're right there and you're like, Latrice, I'm reading this word. I'm doing these things. I'm, I'm doing it. But be mindful of what you say. That lady with the issue, she had been telling herself in spite of the transition, in spite of what looks scary, in spite of this launch, that could be the biggest launch of your life and you could lose everything. What are you saying? Water that seed with God's word. And then be honest with him. I love the scripture that says, help my unbelief. <laughs> you know, tell them, God, help me. I know you put this in me and I'm igniting my faith, but help the parts of me that's dealing with unbelief. Help the parts of me that's struggling. Fear is a natural emotion, but we can't live there. Lord, you said in your word that when I pray to you, you'll free me from my fears. I'm not going to already create a destination of failure that has not even happened. So I just wanted to say that, y'all. I pray something I said encouraged you. Have a great day. Bye.